You may take ibuprofen to treat everything from menstrual cramps to headaches or even arthritis. Ibuprofen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, or NSAID, that can be purchased without a prescription. But that doesn't mean you should pop them like candy. Here's what happens when you take it daily. According to Healthline, a common side effect of ibuprofen is an upset stomach. This is why it's recommended to take it with food or milk. Along with abdominal pain and indigestion, common side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And if you notice black stool, that's one sign you've taken too much. Ibuprofen also isn't safe for everyone. Pregnant women are instructed to avoid it. People with elevated liver enzymes are told not to take it. If you've had an allergic reaction to an NSAID in the past, have a peptic ulcer or had one in the past, or if you're about to have or recently had a surgical procedure, Healthline urges you not to take ibuprofen. Because it can also interact with other medications, talk to your doctor before using if you are 60 or older. Frequently experience symptoms like stomach pain or heartburn, or if you have a bleeding disorder or are taking blood thinners. You should also consider speaking with your doctor if you have a history of conditions like high blood pressure, heart disease, liver disease, kidney disease, or asthma. In 2015, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration changed the warning on NSAIDs and made the language stronger. The old warning notified users that non-aspirin NSAIDs increase the chance of a heart attack or stroke. After reviewing safety information and various studies, the warning was updated to reflect the latest findings. In other words, they make your platelets sticky and then you form a clot. And that's the most dangerous, uh, two dangerous ones that can cause somebody to die. According to the FDA website, the current information now includes the risk of heart attack or stroke can occur in the first weeks of using an NSAID and may increase with extended use. The risk can be greater at higher doses. Whether or not you already have a risk factor is irrelevant, as everyone is at increased risk, even people who don't have cardiovascular disease. The Mayo Clinic advised, if you're taking an NSAID and you notice any signs or symptoms of a heart attack or stroke, such as chest pains, shortness of breath, weakness in one part of the body or side of the body, or sudden slurred speech, get medical attention right away. Heart attacks and strokes have many of the same risk factors, but when it comes to taking ibuprofen, the heart attack risk may be greater. According to the FDA, patients treated with NSAIDs following a first heart attack were more likely to die in the first year after the heart attack compared to patients who were not treated with NSAIDs after their first heart attack. Additionally, there's an increased risk of heart failure with NSAID use, the FDA said. Ibuprofen bottles include the updated warning from the FDA, which reads, Heart attack and stroke warning. NSAIDs, except aspirin, increase the risk of heart attack, heart failure, and stroke. These can be fatal. The risk is higher if you use more than directed or for longer than directed. A 2017 study published in the British Medical Journal found that taking any amount of NSAIDs for either a week, month, or multiple months was associated with an increased risk of heart attack. My name is Miranda Bailey. I am Chief of Surgery at Grace Sloan Memorial, and I believe that I am having a heart attack. According to the National Kidney Foundation, heavy or long-term use of ibuprofen can lead to, quote, chronic kidney disease, known as chronic interstitial nephritis. And if you already have decreased kidney function, you shouldn't be taking ibuprofen at all. In a July 2017 study published in Emergency Medicine Journal, researchers tested the ibuprofen versus placebo effect on acute kidney injury in athletes. In the abstract, researchers said, despite concerns that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs contribute to acute kidney injury, AKI, up to 75% of ultramarathon runners ingest these during competition. They found that there were increased rates of acute kidney injury in participants who took ibuprofen. The severity of kidney injury was also greater in the ibuprofen group. To find out if NSAIDs have affected your kidneys, ask your doctor about getting a blood test called the serum creatinine level. Regarding the test, the National Kidney Foundation said, This test measures the amount of a waste product in your blood that is normally removed by your kidneys. If your kidneys are not working as well as they should, the creatinine level will be increased in your blood. As tempting as it might be to take ibuprofen to treat everyday aches and pains, it can have serious side effects. One of them is gastrointestinal bleeding. People who take high doses on a regular basis are three times more likely to experience a symptom, a 2005 analysis published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology reported. It doesn't take much time to accrue this kind of damage, as it can be seen just three days after starting ibuprofen. Even more alarming, this happens to otherwise healthy people. Research published in Arthritis and Rheumatism explained that stomach bleeding is a well-known risk factor of all NSAIDs. A traditional NSAID like ibuprofen more than doubles the risk of complications for people taking up to 1,200 mg daily. At higher doses of 1,200 to 2,400 mg daily, there's a five-fold increased risk of gastrointestinal bleeding. Although you may think of stomach bleeding and an ulcer as one and the same, an ulcer is actually a sore that's slow to heal or keeps returning as defined by WebMD.
What is it? He's also his bones. What? Will he be all right? We must get him to hospital as quickly as we can. When someone takes an NSAID like ibuprofen, there's a risk of peptic ulcer, or an ulcer in the lining of your stomach or upper intestine. The open sores develop when the stomach acid damages the digestive tract. Doesn't sound like fun, does it? WebMD explained, You may have no symptoms, or you may feel discomfort or burning pain. This kind of ulcer can also lead to internal bleeding, so there is some overlap after all. In fact, if someone already has an ulcer, the risk of serious bleeding is greater. Everyday Health reported that about 15% of chronic NSAID users will develop an ulcer, which may not cause symptoms until it's seriously progressed. What even is potassium? According to Medline Plus, it's, quote, a mineral that your body needs to work properly, a type of electrolyte, and it helps your nerves function, muscles contract, and heartbeats stay regular. It follows that too much or too little potassium can be harmful. GoodRx says that ibuprofen in particular can raise potassium levels as it causes kidneys to retain potassium. Too much potassium, aka hyperkalemia, is defined at a level over 5.5, and GoodRx said it can cause, quote, life-threatening cardiac arrest with no specific warning signs. 20 minutes after you left, he went into cardiac arrest. We tried to resuscitate him, but there was nothing we can do. If your potassium is too high, you may notice symptoms like confusion and weakness. Medical News Today described the liver as the body's key filter, saying, quote, The liver is processing elements of everything we ingest, including drugs. Because of this, medication can have adverse effects. A 2020 study in Scientific Reports looked closely at how ibuprofen affects the liver. In the study, mice were given a dose of ibuprofen, similar to what a human would take, for one week. The study said, more than 300 proteins were significantly altered between the control and ibuprofen-treated groups. Several major pathways were altered in the livers, and there were even gender-related differences. This could affect how men and women are given ibuprofen in the future, once more information is gleaned. One of the researchers told Science News, No drug is perfect, as all drugs have side effects. However, many commonly used drugs, such as ibuprofen, are being overused and should not be used for certain conditions, such as mild pain. If your ears are ringing and there's no bells around, the ibuprofen you've been taking every day could be the culprit. Tinnitus is the perception of noise or ringing in the ears, and it's a problem that affects millions of people. You'd be one of 25 million Americans with tinnitus, a figure cited by the American Tinnitus Association. As mentioned, the condition is most commonly referred to as a ringing in the ears. But by no means is it limited to that particular sound. Clicking, roaring, whooshing, or buzzing are among the sounds listed by the ATA. It isn't even limited to your ears. It can be heard in one or both of your ears, as well as in or outside of your head. Whatever the sound, pitch, or volume, the consensus is that it could be a sign of damage to the ear. NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, are considered as one of the causes of tinnitus. However, when tinnitus is a side effect of a medication, it usually goes away when the medication is stopped. Experience Life says popping ibuprofen regularly could, quote, trigger a spiral of inflammation that results in autoimmune disease. Decades. And that chronic inflammation then causes different types of protein plaques, beta amyloid, tau proteins, a variety of other factors that will then disrupt how the neurons function. Physician Sunil Pai told the site, People are taking this for their joints, but it's not helping their joint health. He shared that his patients will tell him they started off by taking one NSAID a day at the onset of arthritis, and then 20 years later, they're up to three or four a day. Dr. Pai added, They need more because they've built up a tolerance and because they have more joint deterioration. He pointed toward a study in the Journal of Rheumatology that confirmed the link between NSAIDs and joint deterioration. While ibuprofen can increase blood pressure, the amount varies, MedicineNet reported. If you're taking a medication for elevated blood pressure, ibuprofen may make it less effective. High blood pressure is concerning because it can lead to health problems if it goes untreated, health problems that are serious, like a heart attack or stroke. As Science Daily noted, 19% of the U.S. population use at least one NSAID on a regular basis, including 30 million Americans with osteoarthritis, of whom more than 40% also have hypertension. A 2017 study in the European Heart Journal found that in people with osteoarthritis, or rheumatoid arthritis, ibuprofen can increase blood pressure and hypertension. The study compared the use of ibuprofen and another NSAID, celecoxib, for these conditions and discovered that ibuprofen increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. If you're using resistance training to build muscles or strength, avoid taking ibuprofen because it will counteract your efforts, according to an Active Physiologica 2017 study. This was the case with young adults, so don't go around thinking you're exempt. Whether the ibuprofen is in high doses or taken too often, the result seems to be the same. Additionally, weakness is a common side effect of ibuprofen, according to GoodRx. You should see how it affects you before doing anything that requires alertness. The last thing you want is to feel fatigued or dizzy, which is also listed as a common side effect while driving, for example. 
How's this for a contradiction? Taking ibuprofen can actually cause headaches. It may be tempting to continue taking ibuprofen whenever you have a headache, but it might make the issue worse. A rebound headache is also called a medication overuse headache. And Dr. Sate Ashina revealed in a 2019 article for Harvard Health Blog, it is caused by the frequent or excessive use of pain-relieving drugs to treat headache attacks that are already in progress. To be diagnosed with this, Dr. Ashina said a person must have headaches on more than 15 days a month for at least three months while taking a medication like ibuprofen. He listed other symptoms in addition to headache, which include nausea, vomiting, light or sound sensitivity, irritability, difficulty concentrating, insomnia, restlessness, and constipation. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Health Digest videos about your favorite fitness facts are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.